My name is Nick Pineson. I'm from the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. in the United States. Our paper in Pure J, which was a collaboration led by the first author, Ryosuke Motani, who is a professor at University of California, Davis, and me, so it's just two authors. We wrote a paper that addressed a spectacular claim that was published last year, which was that the fossils belonging to a newly described species of fossil whale from the Eocene. This whale was named Parasitus colossus, may have rivaled or exceeded the sizes of blue whales that are alive today. And that claim is based on uh, a fossil belonging to one individual that represents the posterior end of the animal skeleton. So it includes uh, some lumbar vertebra, uh, some caudal vertebra, part of a pelvis. It was from this fragmentary and incomplete material that the original authors developed a series of calculations to estimate body size in this extinct species. And what they said was that they estimated the body size to be as big or larger than blue whales, which are alive today and rank as the largest vertebrates to have ever lived. We don't know of vertebrates that are larger in mass than blue whales. Some sauropod dinosaurs may have been longer, uh, but they certainly weren't heavier. And the calculations the original authors had from looking at the material of Parasitus were claims uh, as much as 340 tons, uh, mean value of 180 tons. And so my co-author and I looked at these claims in some detail and found reasons to think that there was probably a better way to estimate its body size. We went through that original calculation and identified factors that we thought may have biased the eventual output, that is to say, the eventual estimate of body size. And uh, what we did was deploy two different kinds of approaches. One was a volumetric approach, which is to say to estimate body size using volumetric es estimates of the outline and shape of an individual organism. And this applies especially to aquatic vertebrates, which tend because of the reasons relating to natural selection, all tend to look and have the same body shape, the same profile, that is to say, streamlined hydrodynamic form. So there's a volumetric approach that you can use to calculate body size. And then there's also estimates that are based on proxy methods, uh, skeletal mass to body mass. And what we did is we went through those calculations, both approaches, and um, where those approaches provide similar answers, you can have higher confidence of making that estimate. Because ultimately, estimating body size in extinct organisms is very hard because we will never actually be able to weigh them the way that we can weigh living organisms. And here's the challenge too, for extremely large vertebrates, it is impossible to weigh them as you would weigh, say, a human on a scale. Uh, there's simply no scale large enough and no ability to put a blue whale on a scale. So you have to come up with different indirect ways to either estimate body size or directly measure it in piecemeal. And both things have been, both approaches have been attempted. And one thing we did was we calibrated, used our same measurements to calculate, uh, recalculate values for parasitus, but also calculate values for blue whales that have been otherwise measured, say, by length and estimating mass by, by weight. So two of our findings, one, we found that parasitus was likely our best guess, uh, depending on length, was somewhere in the neighborhood of 60 to 70 tons in weight. So that put parasitus as a very, very large fossil whale, but somewhere on the order of today's uh, sperm whales, maybe in body size. Uh, certainly not as big as a blue whale on average, nor as large as the largest blue whales. And we use our methods to calculate what the mass would have been for the largest blue whales ever measured by length. And we get a value of 270 tons. So um, what I think is important about this paper is that we provided a way to 
better characterize the, uh, the different factors that may bias our approaches to estimating body size in extinct organisms, especially extremely large organisms for which we may have incomplete material. The significance of what we did was um, downsize the original estimates of Parasitus into body sizes that we think are probably more likely. And the fact is we won't really know until more material belonging to this extinct species is found. Because it's incomplete, we don't have a full understanding of the skeleton. And there's some terrific questions that remain to be explained. Uh, one, one of them is, what was Parasitus feeding on that allowed it to attain such large body sizes? We don't have any parts of the skeleton yet for that extinct species that are above the rib cage. So no skull, no forelimbs, four flippers, no, um, no rib cage, uh, no parts of the, the thoracic um, body except for two ribs. Um, so we need more material to better test some hypotheses about the biology of this extinct species. And it also certainly shows that uh, early in whale evolution, they attained body sizes that do rival the size of some of the largest whales that we have today. So our understanding of body size evolution has certainly changed with Parasitus. And I think it's important to use multiple approaches that fairly assess the factors that may body, may, may bias body size uh, for estimate for certainly for estimates dealing with extinct organisms, which we'll never be able to weigh directly. Um, so the proxy measurements, the indirect ways to calculate mass, those are really what we have, the tools that we'll have moving forward.